Good morning, it's quite early on a Sunday morning and I have light and I'm awake so I figured I would try and do my collection video. This is my little perfume room, little guest room but it's got my perfumes in it and this is my rickety old perfume cabinet which is doing its job. It's staying stable and it's containing all of my beautiful perfumes as well as some books and other things. I did have a request to do a full collection. I don't think I'll be able to do that for quite some time just because of timing and light. We do have light so it's a good opportunity to get started. Um, so let's, let's go through the doors. So my collection is currently sitting around, I call it the 100 because that is where I'm comfortable being even though it's a crazy number. It's about 104-ish at the moment, but we're getting there. And we've had a hell of a declutter, a savage declutter recently, which I guess is for another video. And I'm really happy where I'm at. I'm happy with everything I have. There's nothing that's getting pushed to the back. There's no one that's getting left behind. Actually, well, there's a, maybe still a couple, perhaps, that are questionable that I'm still thinking about. Maybe I, I like sniffing more than I like wearing. I am very organised. Um, I can't bear clutter and I can't bear... Um, non-organization i like categories i like things to make sense that's the the 100 um actually not all my fragrances are in this cabinet i've got a couple at work and there's a couple in my husband's little stash um so there is a couple that a few here that aren't actually going to be in this selection um and i should point out that i've already tried to film this twice this the intro was yesterday and then i managed to film the entire top shelf and then I gave up because failing light, cats fighting, distraction after distraction, headache. Here we are starting afresh. Let's start with my most favourite, most special bottle in my whole collections. Confessions of a Garden collection confessions of a garden gnome from Fort and Manley. I love the little um, medieval bottle. I will try and whiz through all of them, of course, and try and give a real brief summary of each fragrance. Maybe even do it in three words if I can. Oh, here we go. And this was the standout out of the entire house for me and it really is so different to all the others this one is more of a fresh green woody fragrance it's a mystical magical dewy garden after the rain um it's quite hazy but you've got lily and lily of the valley which really freshen this up and bring it back to life there's a lovely big dose of amber green here which gives it that salty zing um it's just something so special in this fragrance and when i smell it i just get swept away not many fragrances do that. Behind Confessions we have Lucky, which is a beautiful green Lily of the Valley fragrance. Very simple, very clean, very ethereal as well. I like to keep these two together because I do actually wear them together. They suit each other with the Lily of the Valley in there. Um, it's a pretty green liquid as well. And this one's beautiful for spring, so that is Lucky. Possibly my favourite Dior at the moment, actually, that one. And in front here we have Chow Chow San from MGCI. This is a cherry blossom rose lychee fragrance. It is a pretty, pretty pink fragrance and it's a pretty pink juice as well. Um, I don't wear this very often. I find there's an element in here that's a bit concentrated. It doesn't quite... It's not as easy to wear as I think it's going to be each time. It reminds me of something like elderflower with a sort of darker pink quality. But it is very pretty nonetheless. So Greedy or is my i think of it as my winter rose it's actually a chic um quite modern chipra fragrance with rose patchouli oak moss very pretty scent the oak moss and patchouli can give me a headache if the weather is too warm so i, I reserve this for winter and it actually works really well in the winter it's a very beautiful rose fragrance and then we have the col noir which is my first ever high-end expensive fragrance i ever bought no, it's not true. It's the second most expensive fragrance ever bought. So it's kind of special and I do really love it. It's a pretty pink, uh, fresh rose water sort of rose, but there is some sweetness from, from fruits. Um, but there is a green stemmy feel in there, which I've noticed bothers me more than it used to. So it's no longer my favourite, but I do still really love it. In front of the Col Noir, I have one from YSL and that is Blau. So that's also part of their sort of high-end line. If you love Lena, you, you will probably love this one. Um, it's sort of a crisp, fresh, greener version. It's very fresh and crisp, like a pink, crisp blouse, which is perfectly named. Also quite silky as well. It's very put together um, and quite classy smelling. It's something you would wear in like a pale pink suit or, or linen suit or something for the summer. Behind her, we have Sakura. 
cherry blossom lovely cherry blossom fragrance is a massive bottle because I, it was much cheaper to buy it that way on ebay very simple watery cherry blossom fragrance very simple i think of it as a ballerina fragrance because it's pale and delicate um and it's very pretty so that one's very easy to wear i like that in the summer um and then in front of that we have baby cat which obviously i sit with its partner in crime and this one obviously has been getting a lot of hype on youtube in the fragrance community it's been quite hard to get hold of and i think you can now get it i think it's now available uh, don't quote me on that it's a beautiful leather incense um vanilla very beautifully finished and very moorish and addictive so i'm really pleased i got that one behind that we have Behind that we have another, I've got so many distractions. We come to Dior Amour, one I've had for quite a long time. Um, it's a fuzzy, fizzy, slightly green, nuanced, iris powdery fragrance. I find it more fizzy than powdery. Very classy, very simple Dior style, and I find it very easy to wear. Really a satisfying scent for me. I really enjoy that one. In front of her, we have Oud Rosewood. Um, this was relegated to a little 40 mil. I sold my 125 mil and regretted it straight away because I never really wear it. Assumed I didn't like it as much as I did. And the moment I sold it, oh, it was just dread. And I was like, oh, why did I do that? It's a very savoury, it's a very savoury wood, clean oud rosewood um quite sparkly and it's slightly fruity nuance it's got raspberry but it's just enough to lift it a little bit but it is very addicted sort of smell and once i start smelling it i can't stop so obviously i do love it rouge for trafalgar that could be one of my favorites from dior actually but i wear this an awful lot um i find it very easy to spritz it's a very watery red berry watery red berry fragrance with good lasting power because of the heavier notes in here i think there's patchouli it's a woody base which is really really nice kind of rosy nuances in there as well um it's a really good all-rounder really nice one so that is my last one from Dior so we have three here from Louis Vuitton um first one we're going to go with is my, my favorite and that is Heures d'absence which I think means absence of hours or hours absent hours I believe this to me is a really dreamy watery floral ends up to me very lychee very lychee fruity nuance but really there's mostly just flowers in here i can't remember the notes other than rose there isn't lychee um people do compare it to the, the daisy dna but I, don't, I just think it's so much more than that it has a sort of silky feel lychee soaked silks with loads of beautiful watery florals behind it. I just think it's stunning and it's so me and I love wearing that. It is one of my absolute favourites. Let's go to Italfilan. So Italfilan, I never know how to say that. Strawberry, Magnolia, Osmanthus. Um, really, really lovely scent for summer. I really enjoy this one. It's, I always think of it as a picnic scent. I don't know why, there's a sort of a, a champagne fuzziness to it. Um, which is probably the mimosa I think that's doing that and it has a very clean sort of laundry detergent sort of vibe as well but really nothing obvious it just makes it feel really fresh and easy to wear and I love the strawberry in here some days it feels fresher than others or more natural than other days but it, I just think it's a beautiful fragrance really quite a youthful and just happy little summer scent really so this next fragrance is quite recent and it's a bit of a bone of contention there's a story attached to this which is very stressful it was a very negative experience buying this i committed to this bottle they aren't cheap and really it's all about the fancy schmancy bottle and the packaging and design um which honestly just looks like a big lump of screwed up foil it's a um, metal it is metal lid and it's magnetized and it comes off it rocks away very easily so it's not that secure you wouldn't want to pick it up from that i sold a lot of fragrances to justify it and i don't regret buying it i love the scent but the experience of having it delivered was very negative ups um oh, nightmare and then the actual packaging for this despite excess packaging it still wasn't sufficient to house something that's so fragile and insecure unsecure and in my package when i opened it this had rocked off and it had taken the topmost spray spray apart with it and then it got crushed to the side of the, the column it was in and this was all dented and bent um so just be aware if you're looking to commit to one of these bottles that the, that's what happened with mine anyway now the scent um i've got to be honest i don't think it's worth the money it's, it's each to their own isn't it it's whatever you you love um nonetheless i do actually love this fragrance and I, i'm glad i've got it leave me to explain this fragrance and it's not a, it's not a big scent nothing particularly groundbreaking but it is like an amalgamation of Erste absence sakura 
and also the Roger Dove Elixir Parfum. It's like all those three fragrances combined. So it's very pretty floral. Um, and it's it's quite a fluttery, wispy, light floral. It's not groundbreaking and it's not a big, heavy scent. You actually would need to spray quite a lot of it really to get a, a good good performance out of it. It's very pretty. It's very nice. It's, you can get samples, so definitely sample first. <laughs> you don't want to commit without sampling. And obviously you can get your name um, stamped on, not really prettily engraved. And you only get three letters. So yeah, name stamped on the front. I don't think I even like it there because it makes it look a little bit cheap. Dancing Blossom, I haven't yet done a review of. I'm sure I will at some point. Um, for now, I'm just kind of enjoying them and not getting too serious with over-analyzing my fragrances. So that is the first section of the top shelf. So coming over to the right-hand side of the top shelf, we have um, a few bougie ones here. And they're all ones that I really, really love. So I've tried and spaced things out so they look very pleasing and not cluttered. I just think I reach for things easier when they're like that. So over here we have three from Dries Van Norton. This house has been getting quite a bit of um, attention lately. Although it was launched, the line was launched, I think it was a whole year ago. And I did see this bottle um, a year ago on Instagram. And obviously this sort of a bottle is going to catch your attention because it's incredibly beautiful. It's very beautiful. And at the time I wasn't into that sort of scent profile. So I, I wasn't really bothered about the scent. So I kind of dismissed it. But it's very similar to... Um, Sorry, it's called Soir Malaké. Soir Malaké. It's very similar to me to the scent Private Accord from Hugo Boss, which I actually have got. But this one um, is more refined. It's more punchy. It's just got more going on, more luxurious feeling. This one's all about the, for me, this is all about the chocolate and silk cord. And I think there are, I don't know if there are fruits in here. There's a fruitiness to this, um, a very nice, fuzzy, soft fruitiness to it. But it's, although it is a gourmand technically, it really isn't heavy. It's so approachable. It's so silky. I mean, that silk cord is very literal. It's, it's so easy to wear and it just, it glides on. It's very enveloping. And that milk, that chocolatiness in here, I've, I get a lot of that. It's like a finely milled cocoa powder. It's just beautiful and it's definitely worth checking out. Very good performance on that one. And then the other two I have are the two rose offerings from the line, which I was inevitably I was going to end up with. Uh, the first one I bought actually was Raving Rose. Um, when I sprayed this, I instantly knew I was going to love it and wear it. This is sort of my sort of scent. It reminds me of Angel Nova because it's quite a strong, punchy, big, luminous pink rose. And there's tons of pink pepper in here. It's very, very spicy. It's a pink pepper bomb with lots of bright vibrant i mean raving it is a raving rose literally a vibrant rose at a rave and the best way for me to describe the scent is if you had grown a pink a bright pink rose in pink pepper soil and watered it with tomato ketchup that is how this would smell there's this tangy vibrant tang which is quite tomato or tomato leafy um it's very moorish and yeah it's not easy to wear though i wouldn't reach that very often but Really, really, really like it. And then Rosa Carnivornia. Um, or Rosa, Rosa Carnivia, Carnivia? Rosa Carnivia. I can't remember how you say it. Um, is a vetiver heavy rose. Very strong vetiver. And it's the vetiver that goes quite green and dry and grassy. It's quite heady. There's quite a heady perfumey quality in here as well. So I don't mind it. It doesn't give me a headache, luckily. And it's the sort of scent I, I'd wear. And I want something bracing in the spring, like um, something slightly astringent and bracing. That's kind of how this sits with me. And it reminds me of a scent I used to have from Joe Malone called English Oak and Hazelnut. It has a similar feel to that one. But obviously this has the rose as well. So that is why I do enjoy it. Um, so I have three from that house. I love them all. Next, moving on, we have... One from Amani Privé. This is the only one I've ever really enjoyed from the line. Blue Lancy Line. Just beautiful when I wear it. It's more like a texture. A really soft tobacco, plum, cardamom, soft velvety powdery kind of a scent. But it's quite opulent. And I love it in the winter. It's my winter scent. And it smells, it just reminds me of snow, like powdery snow. Next we have my zoologist, my four zoologists. And they kind of sit pride of place. So starting here, we have Nightingale, which is a plum blossom rose sheepra fragrance it's a classic sheeper so it's quite a dry um sharp kind of a scent but there is such a pretty quality from the plum blossom and rose so that one is and it's quite retro smelling which i love so that is that one we have harvest mouse which is one of the most recent launches from zoologist it's obviously centered around the pretty little harvest mouse it's so adorable it's an aromatic vanilla it has a beautiful sweet kind of hay quality and it's there's a foaminess to it, a weird foaminess. And I wore this to the Harry Potter studios uh, last week. I really enjoyed myself. And 
there's a butter beer and it kind of reminds me of butter beer this scent so i wore this and it was perfect so i really enjoyed it next we have cockatiel this was actually a perfume that used to be under the house of sp Parfums, farms and it was called powder and dust but the formulation was um bought up from zoologists and it is now labeled as cockatiel and it's a, such a fun scent and it really does suit the cockatiel it's a big fluffy yellow fragrance with the mimosa and the champagne some beautiful um sweetened nuances from rhubarb and raspberry and i just really enjoy that one and then next we have the adorable chipmunk which i think i'm most fond of because i think i wear it the most and i wear it the most easily it's an, it's not animalic but it, there is a a vibe of the chipmunk there it's very nutty woody friendly charming fragrance all nutty quality from hazelnut which it's just lovely i love it and it's all very well blended it doesn't get dirty or skanky or animalic i just think it's just perfect and i just really enjoy wearing it obviously and then we have four parfum de Marlies at the back here um, we have the classic Delina, the infamous pink queen of Puffums de Mali. Um, just a big fluffy pink rose and peony with the fruity nuances of both rhubarb and lychee. Such a beautifully created fragrance and it's inspired so many. So obviously a classic and I absolutely love it. Um, then we have Cassilli. It comes off quite peachy, fuzzy peachy. It's got a slight tropical vibe to it. It's got the frangipani and the plum and this beautiful heavy tonka and sandalwood and it just comes off as this velvety tropical floral scent very beautiful and it's quite fun as well i really enjoy Cassilli. next we have meliora which i think i think it was my first puff i'm somali meliora this is my bramble my beautiful bramble vanilla rose fragrance ever so pretty um very kind of carefree kind of scent it's a little bit whimsical i do think of like fairies and things when i when i wear that one i love the vanilla quality and i love how the rose mingles with the black currant in there as well and then we have athalia which is the slightly more austere fragrance of an iris heavy fragrance it's very similar to Le blue from Guerlain, and you're not quite so vintage smelling not quite so heavy and powdery it's got more of a, a modern twist with ambroxin and orange blossom but i think of it as my rainy day scent it's got a hazy quality like a yeah like a hazy dewiness and that one is really lovely so i enjoy wearing that i think that's the top shelf done so this first um line up here is a kind of a random selection but they're all random bottles and you know, i just put them together because they're aesthetically pleasing if i'm honest um but the first one is my favorite from one of my favorite vanilla fragrances it's the house of Arquise. it's called architects club it's a very aromatic vanilla slightly woody gets compared to odwell from diptyque quite a lot i prefer this one though it has a it has more personality i think and i think it's more refined i think the other one it's more simple i like the aromatic i think there's some um, angelica in here which sits really beautifully with the vanilla and i think it's meant to give off a sort of gin and tonic vibe which i suppose it does i get a lot more of the vanilla and it's quite a beautiful bourbon vanilla and it's just absolutely stunning it's very it's my calming scent it's a really calming lovely scent behind that one we have one from menta to rosa called sodniac real this is a salty amber um a salty amber scent and that is a lump it's meant to look like a lump of uh, sea urchin it's meant to look like a sea urchin but i always think of it as a lump of ambergris because when i smell this i think of an ambergris that's just floating along the sea surface it's very salty but there's something very animalic in here as well so that is just my i think of it as a raw ambergris scent but honestly it's so much more than that it's just something about this i find really special the bottle is very very tactile and beautiful but it's one that i just wear when i'm in the mood but i do love that i've got it i really really treasure that one then we have one at the back here from creed um i've called sublime vanilla it's a very simple very linear soft but uh soft citric vanilla very very easy to wear it's quite a calming pretty scent it's been nice for a bride i think um i got this really really cheap from turkey i think i can't remember but i know it got it extremely cheap and it is all legit it's all it's all fine as it is um but yeah it's just a very simple very simple scent really i don't think it's worth the money to all my almond jane plus one from maison uh, maison VLA or violet um so at the, at the front here we have frangipani so this is a frangipani magnolia and i think what have we got in here almond almond blossom it has a mediterranean feel i think that almond blossom gives it this warm like when you get a warm breeze in the mediterranean you it carries the scent of flowers and things that's what that that almond blossom does for me so it makes me think of that but it's such a lovely scent and i love that in the springtime 
And behind that we have the Damask from the Fruit de Soy collection of Ormond Jane. Um, this was my favourite from the Fruit de Soy collection. It's a rose, it's a rose fragrance, a Damascan rose. I don't wear it that much. Um, and there's something about it that just, I, I just never reach for it. So I've got to figure out what it is because if I'm not going to wear it, then I'm going to have to sell it. Um, I think there's a slightly sort of glassy, dry, waxy twang from the amber quality in here. And although I love the rose and the mix of the berries, like this blackberry, the way it sits on me, close up, I don't think I'm enjoying it. In, in the air, it's beautiful, but close up, I'm not enjoying it as much as I was. And then behind that, we have the beautiful almond woman so this is an absolutely beautiful aromatic woody um woody fragrance it's, it reminds me of being in a spa it's something so clean and um herbal and fresh and beautiful in here makes me think of grass oil like it's oily and grassy but in the best way quite spicy as well i believe there's or oh, i don't know i think it might be nutmeg i'm not sure i can't remember but that is a beautiful beautiful scent we have the maison maison violet New A Blue. I really fell in love with this when I tried this. And this is not my usual style. It's very similar to, it's got a similar sort of um, profile to the Dior Homme, that kind of um, iris lavender thing. But this one is very clean, very watery, very simple. But there's just something in the way the notes have been blended in here. It has a slightly lipsticky surface on it, like soft but lipsticky. But it's essentially um, a citric sort of colony iris, but it is absolutely beautiful. And um, again, another sort of calming, relaxing kind of scent. Maybe a bit melancholic. Very beautiful. And then we have my... I've got two from Decita. First up, we have Le Pavillon Dior. This is absolutely stunning. Lovely in the springtime. Um, I get a lot of honeysuckle and a big hit of oris butter. There's a lot more to it than that. But those are the two notes I always think of. Very addictive. And I was very fortunate to have won this in a raffle that was hosted by a Smurfy Girlie to raise money for Ukraine. So I was incredibly lucky to have won that. And I'm so happy with it. It's beautiful. Behind her, we have La Ducia de Siam. It's a dreamy, honeyed, exotic floral. Honey isn't my, usually my favourite thing. And the other is exotics. But there's just something in this. But it's just perfect. It's a perfection, apart from the performance, unfortunately. This is a rose. It's got a lot of ye yellow florals. You've got Ylang Ylang, Frangie Pani, Champaka. The most natural sweetness. And it, it's like pollen or something. It smells like the pollen of the flowers. It's so smooth and it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. So behind those two, we have two from the House of Exaltatum. Mimosa Gold. Um, I was addicted to this the first time I ever smelled it. It's a plum mimosa. I can't remember what else is in here, but I think of it as my earthy green marzipan is what I think of this. Um, it has this kind of hay-like quality, this grassy, very dry hay quality, but there's something very densely sweet under here and that's where i'm getting this marzipan nuance from very niche very unusual absolutely love it that's more of an autumn time sort of scent for me and then behind that one we have my favorite from this house which is ruby wood this is my this is my winter pub scent it's very i think it's quite opulent i think there's so much richness in here woody raspberry but it's kind of resinous and balsamic and it has this sort of powdery quality like a dark red powdery quality i just feel very expensive when i wear that like very yeah i don't know a bit femme fatale as well it's just beautiful so very dark beautiful raspberry now let's move on to the house of papillon so these are i've got three from the papillon house the creations of liz moores starting with a very special that was a crow that she actually created for her daughter's wedding i don't remember many of the notes in here but i know that there's a quite a big dose of jasmine because i think her daughter's name is called jasmine so that was quite an important aspect it's a very opulent and very what the hell are those crows doing what are you doing this is like liquid gold liquid gold floral fragrance there's a big big dollop of lovely um oris butter in here opulent kind of slightly vintage there's an edge of being vintage but it's just stunning it's a stunning creation from liz moores and then behind that one we have my favorite from the house which is tobacco rose um Again, another sort of pub scent. I think of it as a pub scent. It's the sort of thing I'd wear down the pub just to chill out and just feel really good. It has this tobacco that's made up of oak moss and I think honey. Um, it gives you that kind of nuance of tobacco, like a fresh green rolled tobacco. But there's a dewiness in here, which I think I would is coming from the rose, I believe. Um, it's just beautiful, beautiful scent. So that is tobacco rose. And then we have dryad. So Dryad is such a complex scent, but it's so addictive. It's a very strong, resinous, woody fragrance. I think of the most 
deepest, most mystical centre of, of a magical woodland when I smell this. Like a dank, damp moss. There's a tanginess in here, which makes my mouth water. Um, very dense and it's not easy to wear this one, but if you're going for a, a walk in the woods on a mystical night with the full moon, um, it's just dryad for me. That's dryad. And it's, you have to, when you, if you sniff it, you'll know. So next we have one from Fragrance Dubois. I have kept it bougie and kept it in its box it just looks so fancy Santa complete is a very beautiful very powdery sandalwood fragrance it has um a coconut quite an elegant and quite a um how do i want to describe this one um it's soft it's actually a very soft scent i like the coconut in here because of the way it's been done with the sandalwood and it's also violet making it slightly powdery the coconut comes off as if it's still in its outer casing you know so it would be, still be quite woody and earthy everything is so powdery and refined and soft it just makes for a very beautiful wear it's incredibly light i wish it lasted longer you've got to really over spray with this one it's lovely just for a, a calm summer's evening scent out complex now we have three from the house of bdk um starting with rouge smoking uh this is a cherry this comes off to me as like a cherry bubble gum kind of a scent what i think it was a fun joyful slightly whimsical fragrance just think of it as really a fun scent um then we have velvet tonka this is the one that i kind of had a complete love affair with and was just obsessed that was all within a couple of months i wore that much um velvet tonka it's tonka heavy obviously it's quite a medicinal scent um slightly marzipan-y quite simple but very addictive very 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 addictive and what can i say it's just a very lovely one then we have wood jasmine um I'm not a jasmine lover, but there's something about this scent that I really enjoy. There's something fluffy about it. It reminds me of being in an orchard. It comes off kind of like cider, apple-y, and it's breezy as well. It's like a dry, breezy scent with like an apple-y nuance, and obviously you've got that jasmine in there as well. I just really enjoy it. it I always think of the orchards in autumn with that scent, so that's my association with that one. Now we have uh, five from Guerlain, starting with the Oud nude so oud nudes in the newer newer bottles i really prefer the older slender bottles there's just something more regal and elegant about them but so this is a very delicate i said i want to call it a ballerina scent again because there's just something very pastel it's delicate simple pretty and easy about it the oud really isn't very heavy and it's very clean it gives me sugared almond weddings vibes because of the very delicately sugared sweet nature and this kind of almond it almost goes off into a cherry direction but not quite because it's quite a nice amount of almond in here honestly i can't remember the notes that is there even almond i don't even know if that's what my association of it at the moment <laughs> but it's very easy to wear and i really enjoy that one next is my most amazingly successful blind buy of recent times um so happy with this this is french kiss and if you can zoom in no, it's on that side, isn't it? There you go. Oh, no, it's on that side. Love this fragrance so much. It's a raspberry lipstick kind of scent. Fruity, <sighs> slightly powdery, um, playful, girly, delicious. Love it. Everything about it I love. Messing up my line here. So then we have Joyous Tuberose. This is actually quite a green scent. I don't get any tuberose. <laughs> I don't like tuberose, really. Uh, I think there's lily in here as well. Perhaps that's the floral that's standing out. But it, I think it's really an interesting scent. It comes off quite cold. It's like a cold, powdery, green fragrance with this lovely white floral. I like that it smells like it's like cold and powdery somehow. Almost chalky, but really enjoy it. Next we have Queer Beluga. I think this could be... Is it my favourite? I'm not sure. I do really enjoy this one. It's a suede and vanilla fragrance. Powdery, um, very enveloping, not particularly loud. Very elegant. I love that the suede is very soft, very enveloping. I really enjoy that one. And then last here we have... Rose Barbet. This is my first of the these Galans um, of the Art and Tabatier lineup. This is a really beautiful, um, quite a mature rose scent. It's quite a waxy scent. It has that kind of waxy, like an aldehyde kind of surface, and it's slightly honeyed as well. But it, it's very delicately done. It's very 
it has that galan smooth enveloping way about it and i just feel very put together when i wear that I feel very ladylike i think so those are my galans we have some ocd color coordination going on so we have front row of mfk and the back row of tom ford so starting with the front row of mfk we have lumiere noir pour femme narcissus this is narcissus yellow floral um it's quite a it's quite a sharp scent. It has a quite sharp. Cheaper. I think there is a mossy, I think it's oak moss. I can't remember, but it's very sharp. It's actually discontinued now, this one. But I find it really satisfying somehow. So anyway, lovely springtime scent. Then we have Gentle Fluidity Gold. This obviously gets a lot of love in the fragrance community. Um, it's beautiful. It's a very um, sort of classy vanilla scent. It's slightly um, fruity. Juniper berry in here, which gives you that slightly gin boozed feeling. But it's ever so sweet. Blueberry muffin flavoured gin. Hmm, that's new. Yeah, blueberry muffin flavoured gin with vanilla. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, then we have Oud Satin Mood. What an opulent scent this is. This is my ultimate femme fatale going out, going clubbing. No, I don't go clubbing anymore. What am I talking about? Just to go anywhere that I've got to dress up. This is, this is the scent. This is the one. This is the thing I'm going to reach for. Um, a really rich, powdery rose violet and vanilla fragrance and you've got the oud in there which comes off quite medicinal but it's not very heavy um i love the the, the violet the powdery whimsical violet in here and it's just beautiful i love it so that's my going out scent that's her then we have the very recognizable baccarat rouge 540 this is the x straight version it has the addition oh i think it's the almond um which i think just gives it a nicer balanced more rounded personality um and i think of this is my christmas scent like a christmas market like spices and sweet and salty and that's the vibe it gives me it's so lovely but then going to the back we do have baccarat rouge 540 and the reason i've got a bleeding among humongous bottle of this is because i got it really really cheap well not really cheap i got it cheaper than a lot cheaper than it should have been and i've discovered that i love spraying this in the summer um i used to have cloud and then i realized that I didn't like that anymore because the coconut just seemed so plasticky and cheap. I think in the end I decided that I just liked this DNA more and I found this whopping bottle for a good price and I've worn this a lot in the summer actually. I find it very refreshing, it's still sweet. Obviously you've got that candy floss vibe but because it's got that fresh ambroxin it kind of it sits well in the heat. I just really enjoy it in the heat so moving on to the Tom Fords. I've got three, I've actually got four. My husband's got one in his stash which is uh, fucking fabulous. These are my three favourites. So, Bitter Peach. Bitter Peach, this was such a love for me. I never expected to love this as much as I do. And actually, I think it might be my favourite. The DNA of Tom Ford, that, that rich, patchouli, dark, sexy DNA that he has in so many fragrances works so well with the peach. There's like two types of peach in here. I think both a fresh one that's juicy and lovely, and plus an older one that's fuzzy and dry. It ends up quite a powdery fragrance, like a powdery, fuzzy nose tingly beautiful peach with that lovely balance of the darker notes and it's a really lovely evening scent that one so that is bitter peach is that straight and then we have vanille fatale i love this one this is a really lovely lovely vanilla fragrance again with tom ford's lovely dna of that it's such a sexy dna or we did it's a woody tobacco vanilla um i get like a piped tobacco with vanillic touches and like old furniture i once described this as the custard stain on gandalf's cloaks i can't even remember where that come from but i think i know what i mean when i smell it it's like a dirty vanilla like an old vanilla and gentlemanly vibes um i just think it's really stunning so there's that one from tom ford then we have the classic uh lost cherry who hasn't heard of this one by now um there are so many cherry fragrances now but obviously every time you hear someone talk about a cherry fragrance they'll always say how does it compare to Lost Cherry? This one broke the mould when it came out. This was a proper big, big cherry scent. And it is really, really good. It's really, I never wear it anymore. I don't think I'm the biggest cherry fan in general. But if, as cherry goes, this is a pretty decent one. The, the performance isn't great. We've heard that from many people before. It comes off quite almondy on me as well. But it is a boozy, it's actually a boozy cherry. And um, very sweet and just lovely. Another thing I want to point out that's significant about Lost Cherry is it is my first ever um high-end fragrance this is the one that started everything this is the one to blame coming into the very last section of this shelf we have my 
wintry, cosy, sort of festive and fun fragrances. Uh, oh, I have got another Tom Ford. I've completely forgotten about this. is one I've only just got. Um, I used to have a bottle of Noir du Noir and then I never wore it. And I sold my bottle to a friend, which I was absolutely fine with. I never ever wore it. But every and again, I think about this scent. I think about it and I want to try it and I want to sniff it again. It just keeps coming back to me. And I found this adorable little 12 mil little decanter mini. I fell in love with it and I just thought, oh, do you know what? I'm going to have that. And I did. And I'm just so pleased I got this because now I get to smell it whenever I want and I can dab it just gently because it's quite a strong scent. So, um, yeah, really pleased with my little mini one there. Um, so we have one from Atelier Des Ors here and that is Iris Fav. This one has such a beautiful, buttery, um, opulent iris. It's like oris root although it's very gatsby looking when i smell this i always think of a victorian christmas dinner because there's just something that's um like a pre-baked figgy pudding pre-baked christmas pudding with the with the rich boozy batter and all the currants and then you've got this lovely oris root in here the iris which gives me these wet dough vibes it gives me wet dough but in such a amazingly addictive way a bit special so that is that with the beautiful bottles that you get from Atelier Dazors very tactile and beautiful and obviously every time you get it you have to give it a shaky with all the gold so there's the beautiful iris far with the light hitting all the gold bits then we have one oh we have another Puffins de Mali I always forget that I've got five Puffins de Mali's Ojan um Ojan is so addictive this is my kind of apple strudel fragrance yeah like a boozy apple strudel this gets compared to angel share from killian I personally prefer these chunkier flask bottles than the i mean they're all beautiful i love all the bottles apart from somali but something so satisfying about holding this big heavy flask in my hand want to wear around christmas time because it has those sort of festive food vibes about it a boozy appley i don't think there's apple in there i think it might just be that the cinnamon is giving me the appley vibe but um I just absolutely love Ojan. And then one at the back here from Zerzhoff. This is my only Zerzhoff. I sold Le Capital. I just realised it wasn't a very me scent and I just need to keep things quite tight and, and curated now. So this is my only one from Zerzhoff. Oud Bouquet. No, Oud Ideal. What am I talking about? Bouquet Ideal is a warm, cosy, woody fragrance woody cinnamon cozy sitting by the fireplace kind of winter's evening kind of a scent there's no berries listed but i definitely get i don't know a berry jam on a on a wood like if you can smear some jam on like a lovely wooden board that's kind of the vibe i get but it is very warm very inviting very cozy it has that slightly eastern um eastern feeling from i think the oud it's lovely it's very uh very addictive again so that is a beautiful one that I wear around winter time. So there we have the second shelf. Okay, so I'm back again. Um, it's later in the day and the light, as you can see, is not as good. So we've got the last shelf to go and then a few extras. So let's start over here. So over here we have Eau de Soir from Sicily. This is a classic sheep right? It's very, very luminous, but very sharp. But there's a very citrusy opening, quite a sharp citrusy opening. And it, it sort of stays sharp all the way through. But it is very green and very luminous. And... It's invigorating. It's an invigorating um, spring scent. And that's what I like it for. We have the beautiful Fawn. I have a lovely backup bottle of this, thank goodness. Made by Thomas O'Brien. Now discontinued, unfortunately. It's like a, a warm, rustic scent. There's aromatics. We have herbs. It's slightly animalic. We also have florals. Um, it's quite woody. It's very outdoorsy. It reminds me of warm autumn leaves. And it's also very meadow-like as well. It's just a really beautiful outdoorsy scent. So that's Fawn. Next, we have one from Tioni Rainfill. It is obviously a lotus scent um, with mysol sandalwood. So it's a real rich, uh, warm sandalwood in the base, which makes it come off quite balsamic and resinousy. And there's also a bright, I find it quite a bright green quality in here. Warm florals, very, uh, does smell kind of opulent. I tend to reach this in the winter, but it is more spring. It is spring winter, so it's early spring, I suppose. Um, very beautiful. Then we have from Nikolai, we have Angelis pear. Uh, it's it's a very dry pear sheep scent. It's got a sharpness to it. It's got a dryness to it. Kind of earthy pear sheep Um That one I fancy on occasion. And one more from House of Nikolai is Violet in Love. This is a really um, this is just a really cute violet scent. It has a little bit of a spring. Um, bounce from raspberry very simple and very easy to wear little violet fragrance really like that one then we have daisy oh so fresh the original oh so fresh which is a violet fragrance it's a kind of a green 
lotiony, soapy kind of a scent. Um, I really enjoy it, but this year I haven't reached for it quite as much. I think I'm spoiled for choice now, but um, it's a, a gorgeous little bottle, and that is a really nice one for spring. So then we have my beautiful collectible Elisa Lem Picker fragrances. Uh, my favourite is the first one here, and that is the EDT. I have a backup bottle of this beauty, so I'm going to spritz away and not worry too much about, you know, trying to save it. Um, the bottles are exquisite, beautiful, whimsical, fairy tale, just a fairy tale bottle. Um, so this one is the Licorice, I'm not quite sure about notes in the Lily Slim Pickers, fragrance are quite sketchy and you really can't find the notes anywhere. Um, but it is essentially a violet and iris uh, licorice. This one has a lot more green than the original. Um, I find it quite spicy, not heavily spicy, but there's something lighter and fresher and just more whimsical about it. For me, personally, it's a beautiful springtime fragrance and very fantasy smelling, like little fairies. Then we have the classic Lita Limpica, which is the, the Eau de Parfum. This is the more recognisable cult classic. This is much heavier in its licorice and it's violet. It has um, cherry, I believe, as well. So it's quite a rich, dense, whimsical scent. Um, this one's more my kind of Halloween scent because it has this sort of dark, candid, licorice -y, you know, fun vibe. Then we have Udim and We, indicating obviously a more nighttime um, style. It's not as um, bold in the notes, this one. It's more muted, but it still has a darkness um, and it's, it's softer though as well. It's sort of darker and softer. And it's just, it's very, very, all very similar. But this one again is just, oh, it's just so lovely, so whimsical. So these three are very specifically my springtime uh, florals here. So starting with my Harvey Ghost from Byredo. This is a violet scent. No, hang on, let me think. What's in here? What it reminds me of is is pressed violets in paper pages in a book. It's a very dry, musky kind of a scent. Fabric, sort of musk sort of a scent. Um, but it smells dry and papery. There's, there are other florals in here. Sort of light and airy as well. My Burberry EDT, a rainy day scent. This is my April showers kind of a scent. Um, it's a sweet pea. It's also, I think, freesia and cyclamen. All plasticky nuance. It makes me think of wearing a Macintosh in the rain. So that is a really lovely spring floral. And then we have one from the Penhaligon's Portrait Collection. Um, this one is Lady Blanche. And she is a hyacinth narcissus and something else um but it reminds me of a bluebell soap so that is that one next line is sort of more fresher florals so the eclat diapage one of my favorite bottles this one is a floral scent it's wisteria lilac there's a i think white tea in here it's it's sort of both soft and really refreshing at the same time i love the wisteria and the, the combination of wisteria and lilac. Wisteria is a, is a flower that's really underused in fragrance. It's such a pretty scent. Very, very easy to wear. Garden flowers and tea, which is lovely. This next one is fairly new. Had a 10 mil and a 30 mil, which I've, I've lasted through the 10 mil. The 30 mil is half empty. And I'm spraying this one as well. This one is from Shea and Blue and it is called Black Tulip. It's essentially, I would say, plum dominant. I think plum is the most dominant note in here. Um, but it's quite a musky, sort of perfumey plum. And you've also got notes of I think it's snowdrop and there's also chocolate in here which is white chocolate um I pick up on that and I think of it as a gothic freshy it is plum which you more often find in winter fragrances I cannot get enough of it I cannot stop wearing it so that's a great one from Shea and Blue then we have one from Chanel so this is Peri Peri of a pink sparkling rosy pink lemonade kind of a rose and it does have that really lovely chic edge from the oak moss and patchouli and it's very classy chic freshy that one then we have another kind of freshy more aromatic this time from the magic collection of victor and rolf this is lavender illusion i find this is more black currant heavy than lavender but the berry and the lavender mix is really nicely together yeah astringently and invigorating that one is but not too heavy this line is more summer fruity scent so that is proxima from centauri it makes me think of some sort of tropical fruit that is pink and fleshy and succulent there are notes of strawberry i think there's aldehydes in here um but for me it's a tropical peachy fleshy fruity smell that is just lovely for summer evenings so that is proxima um then we have one from aqua de palma it's vico di amalfi this is a beautiful fig fragrance this is more your refreshing fizzy drink a fig drink it's just lovely really refreshing kind of fun next we have the aqua allegoria line of garland we have orange solea this is an orange blossom mandarin orange beautiful creamy scent it's very sunny 
and very mouth-watering and I think it just hits the spot when it's really really hot so that is a really lovely one reminiscence drage this is drage this was their orange blossom marshmallow scent really enjoy this i sold love don't be shy because i prefer this this is not exactly the same but it's softer it's more wearable it's more approachable because it's softer and more playful just more I just enjoy it more. I've got a line up here that's hiding behind the panel. So starting with the Versace Crystal Noir, this is the EDP. Coconut, cardamom, what else, gardenia. Everything's just nicely done and it feels like a lotion actually, like a very nicely lotioned coconutty scent with lots of that spicy cardamom. I just think it's absolutely beautiful one from the line. We've got one here from Mansara. Roses and chocolate. This is just a fun, playful rose and chocolate scent. The rose is quite a soapy rose. The chocolate is very powdery. So you enjoy that one. It's more like a, like a fun evening sort of scent. So this is the Stella McCartney Absolu. This is the Stella um, EDP. So this is the reformulated one. Between the two, they, they almost have the same scent as the original formulation of Stella, which was my signature scent for so many years. It's a beautiful ambery rose. Really, I always get compliments on it. I used to think of that as my scent. It's much more transparent and wishy-washy compared to what it used to be. But I was lucky enough to find the Stella Absolu on eBay and it's much richer and denser. And it just it just picks up this one like between the two they almost make the original stella so carrying on with the last portion of this shelf four days since i began filming this has taken so long to film starting with i have this rose peonia from the lancome maison lancome line so this is actually a really lovely kind of flouncy pretty sweet rose and peony a lot of pink pepper in that one it's quite spicy i really enjoy that that's a very typically me scent pink Fluffy, rosy, peony, pink pepper, perfect. Roses, Berberanza. So this is um, possibly my most syrupy, dense, sweet fragrance. Uh, it is a very rose, big pink rose, coated in honey and rum and fruits that are on the turn. It's a real sort of dank, fruity, slightly alcoholic, fruity vibe in here. And syrupy and sweet and delicious. Absolutely love Rosie's Berberanza. Next we have four really sweet fragrances. So starting with the one from Pana London here. This is Pink Mots of Champagne Truffle. It is raspberry, chocolate, rose, and I think it's rum actually, not champagne. But it comes off as a very boozy chocolate liqueur with rose and it's very nice. Uh, rose Rouge, um, again a very kind of sweet rose, a syrupy rose jam if you like with a balance of patchouli and vetiver. There's also chocolate in here, I never pick up on the chocolate to be honest. Um, it's For me this is all about the sort of rose patchouli and raspberry. Absolutely adore that one and that is one of my favourite fragrances. Um, Mizenza we have Sweet Praline, hard to describe. There's a papyrus note which comes off like gluey paper but it really isn't as bad as all that it's quite airy it's very approachable and the the praline is there the whole way through it just gives a kind of ribbon of sweetness and there's also raspberry in here very approachable and it kind of hits a spot it's a really unusual one but i really enjoy that one we have a discontinued gem which is called dancing roses from the magic collection of fix it and roll this whole line was discontinued rosy brandy cherry brandy very kind of thick and gloopy kind of a scent Absolutely adore it though, um, very sweet and very Moorish and kind of coveted, doesn't get warm very much. This line is what I think of my vanillas. Vanillas or thereabouts, Sand Dance, this is more of a whiskey chocolate kind of fragrance with lots of sandalwood in the base. I like the sandalwood, makes it quite creamy and very smooth, but you do get the chocolate and the booze and there's a tobacco -y sensation from that as well. Really, really beautiful, very Moorish. Then we have Kayali's Royal Vanilla Sugared Patchouli. Um, this was an instant hit for me. I really enjoyed this one. It's a very dark vanilla, a really dark bitter chocolate. I think that's coming from the style of patchouli. There's also um, quite a powdery facet to this as well. I just like how dark it smells, almost black, like a black chocolate with patchouli. Yeah, really Moorish, <laughs> really nice. And then we have one from Li Artisan, which is called Noir Esquis. This is a really beautiful kind of chestnut, woody, vanilla. Um, this is my quintessential autumn scent. This is the one that takes me to autumn as soon as I smell it. It's resinous vanilla. It's got this lovely maple syrup and chestnut um, personality, and it's really lovely. And at the back, we have one from Maison Margiela, and this is Whispers in the Library. Quite a woody vanilla, paper and waxed wood. Okay, let me just spray this, actually. I'm interested, and the wind's blowing right in my face, so that's handy. It is quite a sparkling vanilla, but it, there is quite a dark, deep wood. I always think of ebony when I smell this. There's something 
dark and polished. I guess like a like a library with polished wood. Not so much booky and papery, more library shelves and wood. But it is very nice and I do enjoy the one very much. The light is all well and good until it shows up all the dust on your bottles. So this next line is a bit of a mishmash, but they're all, again, just lovely autumn winter fragrances. My favourite being the Black Rain from Renier. Very sharp leather in the opening, and you've got this sort of rose and violet. Also chamomile and ambergris. It's very niche, very interesting. I think of it as my black violet, though. There's something very moody and... Um, it suits me. That's all we'll say. It suits me. Then we have Kisses Rain from the same line. This is an almond amber, an almond amber fragrance, kind of powdery and resinous, very enjoyable and um, it's a bit of a delicious kind of vibe to it. Less sweet, more amber heavy. Then we have Benzoin Boheme from Diptyque. So it's a Benzoin sort of a sort of sparkling vanilla with lots of woody nuances. It's kind of simple, but at the same time it smells really very classy and very, um, very elegant. And it's sort of like an antique to furniture feel from it with it while it's still being quite light and effervescent it's a very very stylish suave scent and then we have this big chunky bottle of missia so this was actually the edt from edt is now discontinued but you can still get the edp which and they're very very similar so i think of this as my my violet wax crayon that's kind of what it smells like um only less crude obviously it's a perfume it's got aldehydes it's very smooth and silky but it does have this sort of lipsticky wax to crayon um feeling from it but the violet is really lovely in here i have my two killians my only two killians i have now so we have princess no more, no less. A kind of green tea, matcha tea and marshmallow fragrance. Quite powdery and quite earthy. Very Moorish once you start spraying. So next we have Black Phantom in its full presentation coffret. Let's take it over by the window. It deserves it deserves a moment. And it's going to sit next to my whiskey and coke. It's a working lock. It's a working key when it's not falling out. Hang on. There you go. So it is a really beautiful presentation. And I think this whole design and concept was meant to mimic the environment of a pirate ship after eight big booze up and everything would be stinking of booze it'd be very syrupy you know, dense a bit sticky essentially black phantom is sort of a condensed syrupy sugary boozy slightly nutty gourmand like muscovado sugar that really dark brown sugar so that is that one and that's the third shelf finish. That's the main bulk of fragrances. I do have a few more dispersed here and there. So we're going to whiz through because this video I know is going to be ridiculously long. So I have my angels here. I've got three angels. I've got another one at work, which is, was very kindly gifted to me by Gabby from The Fragrantition. I've got the Angel EDT, Fluffy, Sweet, Praline and Apple. Um, we've got the Angel Nova, Rose and Lychee, quite synthetic and quite radioactive. Then we have the Eau Crossier 2000, I think this is 2019. I can't remember, but this one's very tropical. I think it's Mango and Praline. I can't remember, but it's a really, really nice, fun, sort of tropical summer scent. This one, I can't remember what it's called. Nina Ricky, Luna. I think it's a praline scent, but it is just because I love the bottle. That's the only reason that's sitting there. A secret treasure hidden within in my bookshelf. And it's a treasure because I won this and it was made. It was just only one that was made. It was part of one of Peter Carter's special raffles that he does to raise money for various charities. And it's a really special thing to do because he does do some amazing limited editions and this was the one that I won. I was so fortunate to have won this this one was called c5 so it's in the classic stock bottle but this is clear glass let me take it to the light it's absolutely beautiful Peter has saved some really beautiful um gorgeous materials for his limited edition special one-offs I can't remember what's actually in here but all I will tell you is that it smells like magic and old books and just this mysterious darkness it's resinous and it's rich and it's just stunning 30 mil his signature's worn off um and i will wear that for, for a very special occasion very special occasion one day this last shelf we just have lots of bits and bobs in different categories i have all my decants loads of decants in there um i have a little mini bottle of angel edp which is just a, like a 50 literally a 15 mil bottle i have lots of little minis in here um i love all my little minis i've got a little little lolita lem picker look at this look how cute that is though look how cute that is all my samples that i'm testing out and using so I'm currently testing out zara from decita which i'm really enjoying these are fragrances i tend to just wear at bedtime just for myself i just think they're really cozy i've got a three here from rosa salas i've got my ellie saab which i mentioned in a previous video that stays in the box because it's discoloring um so these three are love and crime x elo that's a really sweet lemony vanilla 
we have Manakara from Indult, which is a rose, lychee, candid, very sweet. I'm actually using that up because I don't enjoy it as much as I used to, so I'm just kind of using that one up. I've got one from 4162 Tuesdays called Clouds, which is a really lovely lemony citrus fragrance. We have some here that I'm actually selling, so it's a collection that are on the green mile, as it were. We have some backup bottles, some of my favourites, so Lisa Lempica EDT, I've got my backup bottle of Fawn in there. Armani Privé, Blue Lazuli, um, Black Rain, and then there's also a Rose Rouge backup bottle of that as well. Down here in this little baggie, I have some archived fragrances that I don't really wear much, but I really like them just to sniff. But I probably will sell them at some point. So this is the scent, Private Accord, Hugo Boss, that's kind of chocolatey, orangey, powdery scent. We have Jo Malone's Scarlet Poppy, which is pretty much finished at this point, but I've kind of given it a rest for that one. Cloud, that's almost finished, but I've given it, I don't really, just don't wear it anymore. I've got some Love Don't Be Shy, the old formula. I don't have a bottle of this anymore, but I do have a travel spray, which is plenty. I don't wear it very often. That's the old formula. I have Flora Botanica. Don't really wear that. It gives me a headache, but I like sniffing it from the bottle. I think it's just a big, fresh, minty rose thing. Oh, I do have a backup bottle of this as well. I forgot. It's actually on the backup bottle. This is... um. Ecatia Page. This is, I bought this back up all ages ago. It's a good cheapy freshie. Really pretty. Love that one. Absolutely. So pleased I finished that. I need a I need a whiskey. God, let me have some whiskey. So there we have my full collection. So minus the few I have at my workplace. I've got a little mini bottle of Bubble Bath from Maison Margiela. I've got Bouquet Encore from um, the Orchestra. I've got a Jo Malone that's at work. Minus those pretty much everything is here. That is a lot of smelly water. So I'm just really pleased to sit down and finish have you managed to stick around to the end i'm now going to go and finish my drink and start the editing process thanks so much for watching guys take care over and out